in terms of talking about those three young bucks that that were the three people that, that stood out with their more socially liberal, more metropolitan views, this next generation of conservatives looking to allow gay people to adopt. It was you, it was David Cameron, and it was Boris Johnson. I mean, how do you square the Boris Johnson that you remember then with the hard Brexit, Dom Cummings, Boris Johnson now? I'm, one of the the good things about my life is, and one of the exciting things is I've known Boris Johnson for 25 years and he is enormously entertaining and engaging and also a, a contradiction. Uh, he's a very talented, uh, in many ways, sort of brilliant political operator. But often he'll adopt causes to get himself to the top that I don't agree with, including Brexit. And... I always think when I look at Boris, you know, I think he's got what it takes to be the prime minister. Um, and he's sort of clearly fills the job. But I, there's part of it, I, I kind of wish he was the, the, the half of the, 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 you know, the Dr. Jekyll side of Boris Johnson, which is the liberal, tolerant, pro-immigration, centrist Tory who was so successful in the city, London. And not the Mr. Hyde who's, you know, divide the country, push Brexit to its kind of political limits in order to, to eke out the advantage amongst the Brexiteers. And I think he would be much better served as being the Boris Johnson who was the very successful mayor. And there are glimpses of it, it's interestingly. You do see it and it's... So I think he's, got, he's still got it in him to be a very successful prime minister. Um, if he resists, he's made it now, he's at the top. And, and sometimes prime ministers need to remember they've made it. And when they've made it, they don't need to go on dividing the country because they're actually the, they, they've got the advantage of being the, the, the uniter of the country, the leader of the country. And that's what he should be. He should be the prime minister for the, the yes, the 17 million people who voted for Brexit, but also the 16 million people who voted for Remain. And I think his basic political instincts beneath all the, the layers of you know, calculation are the right ones. And, and that's why I backed him to be the leader, much to lots of people's surprise. But you know, I, I think he's, he's got the material there and he needs to resist uh, some of the baser temptations. But the story you've just told is, and I'm paraphrasing, but it came across very much as somebody who likes him, who's known him a long time, but who fundamentally agrees with the criticism that he doesn't believe in anything. Well, I think Boris Johnson believes in Boris Johnson. That's not necessarily a bad thing in politics. Uh, some of our greatest prime ministers, uh, Winston Churchill, who Boris likes to compare himself to, and Benjamin Disraeli, who you know, founded, in many ways, the modern Tory party. I mean, it's not clear they believed in much other than Winston Churchill and Benjamin Disraeli. So you can be a great leader of the country with just an enormous amount of self-confidence. You are the person, whatever the issue. Um, but look on, you know, look on Brexit... I, I, I basically take the view that David Cameron took, which is in his memoirs, which was that Boris saw it as a vehicle for advancing himself in the Tory party. He didn't think that the referendum would turn out the way it did. Um, and he was perhaps as surprised as anyone by the results. Um, it's interesting now in the reality of number 10. Remember all the bravado of we're leaving with no deal. You know, we don't need these people. The reality of the job, and I've, not done the job, but I've lived next door, which is you end up having to be very dependent on your European partners for your economy, for your security, for your voice in the world. I think Boris Johnson's, if he didn't know it already, discovering all that as uh, prime minister. And so in practice, the Brexit he's proposing and the Brexit we might end up with, if there is going to be Brexit, will be pretty closely aligned to Europe. And I think if you end up in 50 years' time, you might wonder what all this fuss was about. You might say that Britain was never going to be part of the really core European project in the euro and so on. We were always going to be fellow travellers with Europe and that's what we remain.